Lately, I've been really loving designing characters. Recently, I had the idea to try and design a character based off of a star sign. I actually did this once before for Mermaid. The prompt was Zodiac and I created a Leo lioness kind of mermaid and that was so fun. Let's give it a go. Let's see what we can come up with. Oh, it is sunny today. I've put together a Pinterest board and I've already got quite a few ideas for this character. Let's go through the board together and let's get sketching. Okay, so first a little bit of inspiration. I love the colours on this one. And then the key attributes of what we're going to use to design the character. Looking at the Aries fact sheet, there's a few things that are jumping out. For starters, it's a fire sign. That's something that we should make note of because that's really going to influence the design. It is ruled by Mars, but I don't think that's something that I'm going to include, but I will write it down here. As far as the colours go, this one here uses... There's no way that you can see that. It uses red, orange, but it includes green. And then this other one is just red, orange and white. Red, gold, white. That seems to be the general consensus. I don't know why that one says green. But that really leans into the fire, so we're going to use it. So these are the colours associated with Aries. And this is why, again, I was thinking of leaning into the whole fire theme. This is the symbol for Aries. It's the ram. And we are going to include this either as like a necklace or maybe on the face. I want to include it somewhere. That's what the constellation looks like. It's a little bit off, but it's kind of close enough. Looking at the key traits that an Aries has is really going to help us decide what this character is going to look like, what the pose is going to look like, to try and morph a bit of personality into it. The problem is, a lot of the time when it comes to star signs, every single thing says something different, so we're going to try and go with the ones that come up more often. This one says the traits are courageous, enthusiastic, optimistic, and also stubborn, opinionated, and self-centered. And this next one says nothing. Enthusiastic, self-confident, and assertive, so again, a similar route, but also moody, impatient, impulsive. The confident, impulsive, a risk taker, the pose needs to be really bold and actually show that. And the character does as well. Okay, so moving on to the character now. When I saw these traits, the colour palette, the fire sign, I then went into makeup, fire makeup. So next in my Pinterest board, we've got this. Fire makeup, I think will look really cool. And then I found this one, the orange ginger hair. I think that would be perfect. Something like this hairstyle, the cute bob with the ram horns, I think would look really cute with like fire makeup on the face. And as for the confident pose, I've got a few options available. So this one I quite liked. It's very subtle. The other ones I've got are this one, which is quite cute. This one I like. This one I think might cover up a little bit too much of the face. And this one's cute as well. Looking directly, looking confident, assertive, that's what we're going for. Let's start sketching, let's start figuring it out. One thing that I know for certain is that it's going to be a cute little orange bob, like, well not like mine, but <laughs> just like that one we saw with a fringe above here and really untamed curly hair with the ram horns. So the hair's going to look something like this, with all of the colour palette in, the red, orange and yellow. Maybe a little bit more red at the top, if we add that in. Going down into orange, and then yellow on the ends. Yeah, this looks pretty good for an idea of what the hair's going to look like. 
Next we should probably move on to the horns. There's lots of different ways to do it, but I don't think I'm going to go too over the top. I don't want it to take away the focus of the face. So they're going to be there, but they're not going to be very big. It's going to be a little bit weird straight on because I guess if it wasn't, it would kind of be like that. But if it's going to be straight on, I think it will be... It won't look as good, probably. Yeah, see, that doesn't look as good. Let's try some other ideas. I quite like this smaller one, actually. Maybe not this small, but maybe something like one of these would be really cool. Yeah, something like this one. We've got the hair, we've got the horn. Next, we need to see what the face is looking like. Put you a little bit closer. So what we're considering is this hair with... This is the pose and a face that's kind of merging these. That's what I'm going to be considering whilst drawing this. Oh, sorry, I just realised that was like off camera. I'm not usually a huge fan of the paper texture in this one, but it actually looks kind of decent here. I feel like it works. I think this horn needs to be shifted a bit. If it's a slight angle, I think the horn will actually be... So it normally goes around like this, so maybe it'll be kind of shrunken a little bit like that. A bit narrower, I think. I don't know. I've never done horns before. Okay, if you just ignore how big the iris is in that eye. Yellow on the lid going into orange. Big red eyeliner. What if we were going to try the look that I've seen quite a few people do when I was looking that was kind of like fire like this? Maybe. We'll see about that one. And the pose is kind of like this. These are the components of what we've got. So Aries is a fire sign. This is the colour theme. It's all about fire. Oh, I forgot to put the symbol somewhere. Can't really put it on the head because of that. So maybe, maybe I'll just quickly draw it on the neckline. It's a necklace now. This is the hair, this is kind of the face. This one is probably the horns. I don't know if I'm going to go with that eye makeup or if I'm just going to do it really subtle because I don't think that really worked so well. And then this is kind of what's underneath the neck because I ended it at the neck there. So it's the necklace and then the top might be in it, might not, depending on how portrait it is. I'm going to have to do it small so that the horns have enough space to fit them all in wide. But yeah, this is what we got. These are the components. I'm going to get on with the sketch and I will see you when we're painting it. After I finished the initial sketch, I did some deeper research and there is so much to unpack when it comes to the zodiac signs and what they represent. Aries, the ram, is a fire sign ruled over by Mars and it's associated with the head. I knew that each of the zodiac had a sign type, fire, water, earth and air. But I had no idea that each had a body part and planet associated with them as well. The amount of information you can find on what type of people fall under each sign is staggering. I'll be the first to admit, I don't really create characters or stories. 
I don't have much of an imagination. I get ideas but rarely delve deeper than that or create in-depth backstories for my characters. If you've watched my other character design videos where we created characters based on a pumpkin and a snowflake, I'll leave them down below if you haven't. You'll know that only recently have I actually given my characters names. I'm pushing myself this year and really trying to create characters that feel, at the very least, interesting. They have names, a story and a purpose. Up until now, for me it was about the art, the look and feel of a character, and not much more than that. The zodiac signs allow so much freedom that I must say was a little overwhelming. I did my research into what personality traits an Aries has, which really helped shape this character. We'll talk about the character a little bit later, but first let's discuss what makes an Aries. A person born under the influence of Aries is defined by their headstrong nature. As the part of the body that's associated with Aries is the head, this makes sense. They're often seen as impulsive, stubborn, and even reckless. But this comes from a great sense of self. They are extremely self-confident and independent, very assured of themselves. This can mean that Aries are direct and often cause conflict. Since Aries is controlled by Mars, the Roman god of war, they are hot-headed in nature and often have explosive tempers. What makes an Aries special is their loyalty. All the traits I found when researching were the stubbornness, recklessness, somewhat aggressive and rather negative. And yet, it's said time and time again that the Aries is a natural leader. They are charismatic and courageous. They will protect their own without asking any questions. And their open and direct nature is what brings people in. People naturally trust an Aries. This loyalty tied with the independence and hot-headed nature can lead to Aries being rather prideful, seeing a slight against their friends and family as a personal attack. However, this does not dissuade people from wanting to be near them. An Aries is the life of the party. Their warmth and loyalty makes them ideal leaders. Their natural charisma shapes their lives and leads them to be ambitious. Their independence and want for everything to be better than it is leads them to dream big. They have ambitions, but not out of a desire for malice or power, but for a very direct want to help others. Their determined and courageous nature gives them a direction. They're going somewhere in life. This, again, draws people to them, allowing their loyalty and charisma to shine through. There's a lot to learn about what makes an Aries. It really helped shape the personality in my mind, especially when looking into other fictional Aries. Some were rather obvious. Captain Kirk from Star Trek, Rocky from, well, Rocky, and Wonder Woman. They all show that natural leadership, determination, and strength of will that I read about. Others took a little while to understand. The Weasley twins from Harry Potter, Joe from You, Sam from Lord of the Rings. It took a second, especially with Joe from the Netflix show. But then I realised that they all have a singular focus and are fiercely loyal to either others or their own dream. And this really helped paint a picture of who my Ares character is. This is Ares. Ares is a young adventurer from a small town in the countryside of a once grand kingdom. It's not a well-off town, nor is it run down. This town prides itself on its sense of community. Everyone knows everyone, and everybody chips in to help out. There are no great divides, no great wealth. The people of this town want to live a simple life, free from the dangers of the world. This peaceful life is a safe haven from the bandits, goblins, and evils of the world and its people are content. However, this peace is held together and allowed to thrive because of the actions of one hero. No, not Ares, an old soldier, a hero of old from a war long since over. This pillar of the community uses sword and magic to keep people safe. Their reputation keeps most evildoers away, so only the small rabble non-threatening incidents have to be dealt with like a small goblin den or bandit camp harassing a nearby farm. Simple matters that, even if they weren't dealt with, the world would just keep on spinning. A simple life for an old hero. And so the town goes on, looking after each other, watched over by their humble protector. Eri's mother stumbled into town one night, her caravan raided by trolls or bandits. 
The guard's money, and most importantly, her husband, had been lost in the rain. The soldier rounded up some fighters to help, but the raiders were long gone. Without money or family, the mother would have struggled to provide safety for her unborn child. Without a second thought, the old soldier took them in. In this safety, Ares was born. All she knew was the kindness of the town. The old soldier became a sort of father figure for the young girl. Her mother would tell stories of her father, the kind smithy that whisked her away from a life trapped behind walls. Ares didn't quite know what it meant, but she didn't really care. Ares was happy. She made friends, helped her mother at the local bakery she worked at, and just lived a happy, carefree life, knowing that she was safe behind the walls with the hero. One day, Ares was playing with her friends in a small woodland just outside the town when she saw them. Four hideous grey goblins moving towards the town, and more importantly, her friends. The children screamed and ran towards the town, the goblins close behind chasing them. Ares saw that one of her friends, the youngest in the group, was not keeping up and without thinking she picked up a rock and threw it at the goblin before running towards a large tree. The goblins chased after Ares, saving the younger friend. They caught up to her. She grabbed another stone and prepared to fight, her hands shaking when a bright flash and a loud crack echoed across the field. Ares crouched down, hiding her hands and covering her ringing ears. Moments later, a warm familiar arm had wrapped around her. Her soldier had saved her. She looked up at their worn face and knew then she was to become the protector of the town, just like they were. The years went by, Ares trained to fight, first with her fists, then with a sword, but she always preferred her fists. At 11 years old, during a particularly grueling training session, Ares let her anger get away from her. This ignited a dormant spark. Her hair glowed with reds, yellows and oranges. The ground where she stood burnt and smouldered, and with an almighty shout, she produced a fire out of her mouth, setting the old hero's cloak aflame. She had magic. Once the fire had been dealt with, the hero laughed and called her Little Flame. This quickly caught on and spread throughout the town. A pet name. Those she trusts call her Little Flame as a sign of affection, but if you call her that without knowing her, it's a quick way to receive a punch in the stomach. Eventually, Ares would work alongside the hero, protecting her town, fighting off raids, and working on her magic. There was no magic teacher in the town, and after she accidentally set four buns on fire, she agreed to put her magic to one side until she could receive proper training. Occasionally, her impulses and her temper do get the better of her, but this didn't stop her becoming loved and respected by the whole town. She was seen as a leader, the next in line to look after them all. This became apparent at 24. A simple bandit group was stalking the road into town, and several carts were lost. Ares and her mentor went out to deal with them. The threat was nothing great. Ares' courage and the hero's experience quickly dealt with the rabble, but not before Ares noticed something which greatly saddened her. Her mentor, her hero, was slow. Age had finally caught up. Not wanting to hurt her father's feelings, Ares worked with her friends to form a group to take up the mantle of protecting the town. The group, with Ares up front, have gone out into the world to train, grow, learn, so that one day they can come home and give the old hero their well-deserved retirement. Okay, what do you think of Ares? This is my first attempt at a true character design and I'm really happy with how she turned out. I knew I wanted the fire element to be a big part of her appearance. There were a few tweaks I made since creating the sketches together. Firstly, the eye makeup. I wasn't completely sure about that concept. In the end, I decided some simple yellow eyeshadow with bold red eyeliner would fit best. A lot of the elaborate makeup designs we saw were difficult and I don't think they would have added to Ares, if anything the focus could have been taken away. Whilst I had no plan for the background, adding fire and water blooms were a completely spontaneous decision. As you saw, Ares did in fact have shoulders. Joining the clothes with the background to create a frame was an artistic choice and less about the character. 
That being said, I think it works really well, even if adding the red was kind of a scary move at the time. I would have liked the hair to have been more curly and messy, more like the Pinterest photos that we saw. I think that boils down to a lack of experience painting hair, and that's something that I want to work on with each portrait that I make. I'm really looking forward to exploring this world. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any ideas of who the rest of the star signs will be. Make sure you're subscribed as this is going to be a year long series. We're exploring every star sign and the world that they live in. This is how Aries has turned out. How gorgeous does she look? Aries is up on my imprint store. If you'd like to see her as a print or sticker, I will leave the link down below. I don't know about you, but I'm really happy with how this painting turned out. We're gonna do it. We're gonna create a character for every single star sign this year. So if you don't wanna miss any of that, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for being here and watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. Take care of yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.